In this video, we're going to continue where we left off, and we're going to set up the custom procedure calling. So in the previous video, we created this custom procedure here that will go through and hopefully, you know, in theory anyways, update every, every tape, well, sorry, update the table instead of replacing it like it was happening in the previous video where our player ID matches the one we're passing in. So we're going to be working mostly with our uh, API here in Kotlin and going from there. So we have to create a new query as well as we want to change this up. Well, not create this up, but make another one for put. We're going to do at put mapping. And I want to do a change as well. I want to change, remove player data from all these. So up here in request mapping, we're going to do API forward slash player data. And now we can just remove the contents, with the exception from this get mapping that contain player data. Just like so. In our put mapping, we're going to have a function. Let's just do update player data at request body player data player data. So here we want to call the procedure. So we have to actually make that. So we're going to copy what we have right here for get by PID and paste it in. We're going to change it to update up, update data because it's in the player data repository. So update data kind of makes sense, at least to me. So we have this update player data procedure that we're going to call and we have a bunch of parameters. So we have more than just that, we have the entire player data. So our entire entity. So we have ID is valid. And what was it? PID. Oh. And where is it? X chord. Y chord and what thing note? Z chord. Hopefully that's correct. Then we have all these parameters that we have to pass through to it. So the first one being ID. So we're going to do ID. ID. Type integer. And we can actually copy this and paste it. So we need one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So two, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to start working our way through it. So we have ID, then is valid, then PID, then health. Then X chord, then Y chord, then Z chord. And no more after that. Let's make sure these are all right. This was a Boolean. And all those are the same. So now we go through and we rename the parameter value. So Z chord, obviously Z chord, Y chord, Y chord, X chord, X chord, so on. So just run through and do pretty much all of these that there are. And that, I believe, is all. I'm going to do a, go ahead and build, make sure I'm not missing anything, like, obvious. And another thing is, I do not want it to return anything. So I'm going to remove where it returns player data, because I just flat out do not want it. Okay. So now, in our put mapping, all we have to do is player data repo dot update data and we're going to pass in player data okay scratch that i gotta run through and do each and every one of these i feel like there's a better way for this but i am not entirely sure how to go about doing it but anyways it's going to be player data dot id Player data dot is valid. Player data dot, what was it? PID. Player data dot health. Player data X, Y, and Z. So the only issue we're having here is ID. So type mismatches type long. So we're going to come up here and change the type for ID to long. And that got rid of that complaint. 
I'm going to go ahead and neaten this up a bit. And we hopefully should be good to go. So I want to do a test here with Postman. Back to player data, refresh, make sure we're empty. And I want to try to pass in all this information for the PID of 1235. So change it to 1235 for the PID, post to put, and we're still on player data, yep. Let's see what happens. I feel like it's going to fail. And I also feel like it would help a lot if we were actually running the API. So, running it now, hit send, and we have an issue. So let's go ahead and look through and see what that is. So rule set is from update, no data. Ah, right, I've had that before. So that's an issue. Actually, I'm not entirely sure how to fix it either. Inside of our, uh, ah, what do you call it? Our procedure. So that's something, unfortunately, I have to go through and look up and try to see how to fix because I do not remember at all how to do so. So I'll see you here in a little bit. All right, so I figured out it's not actually really an error or anything to worry about because if I go through, you can actually see it's already changed. So, for example, if I change this to 805 for the health and send it, even though we get this issue here, well, error, when I refresh, we have 805 for the health. Now, the only thing that it's really just having the problem with is it's not returning anything, so that's why it's given us that quote-unquote issue. So what we can do is in our procedure... If we just want to get rid of it, again, you can skip this portion. We can just make it return just the table. So for whatever reason we need it, we would have it. So we're going to do select all from player data, where PID equals underscore PID, and we're going to limit this to one result. So let's go ahead and apply. Because we made that change to return something, let's head up here to our repo and make this return player data. So we're gonna go ahead and re ugh, restart that. Let it do its thing. Go back into Postman, let's change this back to 55 for the health and hit send. You can see there's no issue there, no warning, no nothing. And we head over here, 805 for the health, refresh, we have 60 er, 55. And it's not giving us any complaints down in our uh, API as well. So we're good to go. Now we just have to go through, and I cannot remember exactly what I was doing, but uh, all this from Unreal Engine. So if we head over to, well, yeah, here's save data, change the verb to put instead of post, we should hopefully be able to send or save slash update all of this information. And we should actually be able to see this kind of happening in real time. So let me hit play. Ah, yeah, that's something I didn't think about because we're going to be spawning inside of the world. So let me update the Z coordinate to like, and we'll do 1000. And then hit play. Sorry, I got interrupted. So now when we hit play, we spawn above the world by 1000 meters. And wait for the save. Hit saved, refresh, and here we have our new. Uh, coordinates. So I'm going to run up to, uh, I'll go right on top of this block here, health at 55, I'm going to drop it down to 35, wait for it to save. And it's saved. Let me close it. And if we refresh, we have our updated coordinates, updated health, and everything. So now when I hit play, I should be up here. And I'm right up here, just like before. The only difference is my rotation isn't saved, but that's the exact same thing that you would, uh, that's the exact same thing as location, so that's not really a big deal at all. But it puts us in a good position, so I'm kind of curious how close it gets, so I'm half hanging off this thing. So I'm curious when it happens when it saves and loads. So it's saved. Let's hit play. And we're right here on the edge. So we know that everything's working properly. And it's all updating as it's supposed to. That's pretty much it. Uh, we have our healths being saved. We have our coordinates. 
and that gives you the basics for, you know, location, rotation. It'll show you how to do stats like health and all that kind of stuff. And that's all there is actually really to keeping persistence. It's quite simple. Again, the only thing I would really change here, let me find it, where we set up the timer in the begin play of the player controller. I would do this inside of the game mode. And in the game mode, you would have a function called like save data. And every time save data runs, you would loop through the player array, which is just an array of player states, get the owning characters of those player states, get all the information like their location, health, weapons, ammo, you know, whatever you're going to try to save and save it that way. And also don't save it every five seconds. Update that to like somewhere past like a minute, for example, as well as have simple events. So when a player logs out, that player then gets their information updated. So I may end up doing a little video on that as well, because currently we're doing that in post login. There's also a function for logging out where we can do the exact same thing. So I might do that. So that way, every time a player logs out, their information gets saved. When they join, their information gets saved. And then periodically through the match, their information also is getting saved. So that way, in case the server drops or something like that, they at least have a recent representation of what they had for their stats, inventory, location, and all that kind of stuff. So they're not really going to be set back. That I think wraps up this series. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Remove the comment that's not needed anymore. But as always, this uh, this entire setup, I'm going to try to have published, and I will have it up. Uh, available for download. So we'll have the project, the MySQL table, as well as the Kotlin project. All those will be available in my Discord. You can find the links for them. And yeah, so you'll be able to have a decent reference. Anyhow, that's going to be it. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series where we use Unreal Engine with C++ to create Team Deathmatch from the ground up as well as a bunch of other miscellaneous features, such as a weapon customizer, custom spawning, and all that kind of stuff. And if you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord down the link below, and I'll help you out.